For me, it's an honor to be here kicking off this uh, Broadband World Forum 2015 for the first time in London after several years in Amsterdam. And uh, I want to share with you today what is happening in the, in, in the industry. I believe that uh, for some years we have been debating if uh, gigabit was uh, a real need or if gigabit uh, was uh, something that was more a marketing type of uh, stuff. But the question is not uh, what is it. The question is uh, it is a reality. It, it is starting to happen. So what I, what I decided is, uh, is to talk about, uh, about how are we going to make it happen? How are we going to shape the market in order for it to happen in the right way? And that's what we call the gigabit colundrum. Colundrum is uh, something difficult to solve. And indeed, it's very difficult because at the same time, while we are deploying networks that are able to provide the fastest service, we have also to provide networks that are providing service at the cheapest cost. Because FIX is about business case. FIX is about deploying fiber to the most economical point. FIX is about uh, balancing coverage and capacity. And all that requires tons of innovation. A lot of times people think about FIX of a mature market which is a polite way to say legacy market. I don't think FIX is legacy. And in the last uh, three, four years, I have seen the, this industry evolving faster than ever. I have been working in FIX uh, for the last uh, 20 plus years. And uh, believe me, what the things that are happening today, I have not seen that before. Whatever prediction we do, it comes faster than we anticipated. So talking about gigabit being a reality, we have seen, you all have seen, that this has started in APAC. APAC uh, is not only providing a gigabit per second, they're going to 10 gigabit per second to residential. Yeah, this is not for everybody, but this is starting. And the moment things start to happen, it will, you, you will not be able to stop it. It will be like a, a snowball. After APAC, we see North America starting to follow and you, saw, you know that uh, operators, and I'm not talking only telcos, I'm talking also cable operators, are providing today residential services at two gigabit per second. So Europe will follow very, very fast. You saw last week that Chattanooga City in, in, in the States, they launched a, a, a TWDM uh, network to provide 10 gigabit services. So in this uh, year, last year, in, in, in well, not last year, in the last 12 months, so in 2015, we have seen three new technologies coming into place. The first one, TWDM PON. As you know, TWDM PON is a technology that is uh, capable of providing 10 gigs symmetrical multiplied by four lambdas. And this is an innovation that we launched in Alcatel Lucen one year ago at Broadband World Forum. So we are starting to see a lot of traction with, uh, as you can see, uh, trials all over the place. TWDM PON uh, is uh, <coughs> being deployed, as I was saying before, by, by our first customer in, in the States, and some others will follow very, very soon. But that's not enough, because if you remember, we have been debating over the last three years if it was about fiber or about copper, and we always answer the same way. This is not about fiber or copper. This is about fiber and copper. Why? Because what we have to, to provide to our customers is the solution that better fit their needs, that better fit their business case. And for that, in many cases, what happens is that copper technologies that provide fiber-like speeds are the best complement to a good fiber solution, because that will precisely solve the equation between the balance between coverage and capacity. And that's why G.Fast is being so, so successful. G.Fast, as you know, today is providing speeds in the range of 800 megabits per second. We are uh, working hard in order to accelerate the next standardization, and uh, it will provide one gig. But that's not the end of the story. What we are seeing today is that operators like Tsunga Telecom, as you know probably, are starting to deploy G.Fast, and uh, here in the UK, you have the biggest trial with 2,000 homes by British Telecom on G.Fast. 
And by the way, keep your eyes open because you will see tomorrow that uh, g is not the end of the story on copper. We keep on improving on, on copper with faster speeds. Uh, precisely because of that. Because sometimes fiber is very good. Fiber can provide you the capacity and the reliability that you're going to need to provide to your customers, but you cannot enter the home. Or it's too expensive to enter the home, to put the fiber up to the home. If you can reuse the last meters with copper and provide gigabit per second with g fast, and that is cheaper than putting the fiber, that's uh, music to the ears of the operators, and that's what's happening. g fast is the complement. Now, the third technology that happened in 2015 was uh, vectoring. Vectoring, some customer asked me recently, so, but is vectoring a reality? We have delivered almost 20 million lines already. And with vectoring, BDSL2 vectoring, you are able to provide more or less 100 megabits per second depending on the distance. But that not, that's not the end of the story. We put in the market this year V+. V+, plus is an enhancement of VDSL2 vectoring that can go up to 300 megabits per second. A1 Telecom Austria is, uh, is uh, already announced that they are going to work with V+, in combination with other technologies. As I was saying before, FIX is about combining the best technology for the operators to provide that gigabit or 10 gigabit per second uh, as soon as they can, and more importantly, the most economically possible. So, there are five trends that I believe will change the industry. And it's not just about connectivity, it's about uh, the services that go beyond connectivity. The first one, of course, is, is 5G. We all understand that the devices that we all use are mobile. The last meters of the, of the fixed network is a mobile network. And 5G represents exactly that concept. We're going to need capacities in the future, in the near future, that are going to require a fixed network that is capable of supporting that. And sometimes we forget that. Fix is all the things that are behind the scenes that provide the mobile new technology the capability to give the services. So I see 5G being the real convergence between fix and mobile. A good uh, backhaul to provide 5G services is what operators need. And that's why you see, in the last couple of years, big mobile-only operators investing in fixed assets. Because at the end, you can build a mobile network in a reasonable time frame with the right amount of capex, but you cannot build a fixed network in a reasonable amount of time, even if you have the capex. So you need to have a fixed network if you want to be a converse player. The second trend is the Internet of the Things. As you all know, there are today more devices connected than people connected. And that trend is only going to go up. Yeah, people say, yeah, but uh, those devices are not going to consume a lot. Well, <laughs> wait a second. Uh, we always predict these type of things until you provide the capacity. And once you have the capacity, people will invent the application that is capable of bringing all the, all the resources that uh, the capacity is providing to you. I'm sure about that. I mean, you have seen that uh, happening all the time in our devices. The more memory, the more processing power, the more capacity you have, the best applications that uh, make them look like uh, not enough. So you can stop progress. So Internet of the Things, I believe, is going to be the next big, big thing that we will have to uh, solve in terms of connectivity and capacity. NFV is the end, virtualization. Virtualization is something that, in reality, we have been talking for a long time. But uh, now is when you can start thinking seriously about uh, it happening. Virtualization, what it brings to me, is, uh, is uh, huge OPEX savings for our customers. But in order to virtualize things, which is a fantastic thing to do, you have to have the right connectivity in the access. Because without that, you don't have the right latency, you don't have the right uh, the speeds, but principal, principally the right latency. So we are in debates with many customers on how to do this, even in the access, not only in other type of technologies. And we are now 
deciding or, or debating or deciding which type of things scale and can go into the cloud, which type of things have to remain in the network. Unlicensed wireless. Look, Wi-Fi has been for a long time the last part of a fixed network. We are now talking about uh, using unlicensed wireless for LTE, which is more efficient, as you know. And, uh, and, and, and again, we are debating one or the other. And it's not one or the other. It's, it's one and the other. It is a matter of us, the industry, agreeing on what is the best use that we, you, we can do of the different technologies. There is a lot of uh, customers to serve, end customers to serve. There is a lot of technologies available. And what we have to, to do is to be smart enough to uh, use the technologies in our advantage and thinking always on how to make the business case for our customers' work. And then, of course, the cloud. Uh, all of that, uh, what I said before, uh, is, uh, is coming into, into the cloud because, uh, in the end, cost is the key. We can talk a lot about technology, but if you don't have the right cost, they will never be deployed. I mean, we have a lot of uh, experiences in other industries in which uh, good technologies have not been successful without the right cost. Cloud, to me, is, as I said before, the thing that is going to help the business case to, to, to work much better, to dedicate the right hardware in the right place, but at the same time use generic proposed hardware for all the things that can be done in a, in a, in a more efficient manner. So, as I said at the beginning, and I want to leave some time for questions, this, uh, this columnrum that we have in front of us for providing gigabit is composed by many things in the equation, by an ecosystem of suppliers uh, of technology, of suppliers of chipsets, of suppliers of services that have to work together in order to provide the best solution without any kind of, uh, well, lack of flexibility, I would say, in terms of uh, what do you want to deploy or not. We have to be open in order to uh, mix whatever technology is best, is best to suit the needs that are going to go up no matter what and provide the technologies that today can service 10 gigabit per second and at the same time at the right cost for most of the end users to have a reasonable speed. What is a reasonable speed? Well, you know that uh, in all the countries uh, you have a digital agenda in which uh, that's defined. For now, from now to 2020, we will see most of the broadband users in the world being in speeds up to 50 and above. And from there to the 10 gig, uh, we have to give the same technology, providing solution for everything. Ubiquity is something that, uh, that uh, requires also a very good fixed network as a backhaul of the new technologies in mobile, security, we are talking, uh, sometimes we are underestimating the importance of security when we talk about uh, cloud. This is something that uh, we have to think very carefully on how are we going to implement it because the more we go into these type of solutions, the, the more important it becomes. And you only have to read the, the newspapers to understand that things cannot be done just uh, in, in a non-structured way. And, and basically, with all that together, we have the tools to make it happen, which is what I was saying at the beginning. We in Alcatel Lucen uh, like to say that uh, the future is bright in FIX, regardless of uh, the fact that, as I was saying before at the beginning, normally FIX is seen as a legacy type of technology. On the contrary, I believe we are a fundamental pillar for the, for the telecom industry in the future. The future is bright, the demand is there. We have to shape the market and make it happen. Thank you very much.